see here, code silver is when I run out of Bustello and I hit bottom. <laughs> but I um, I'm just waiting for my water to boil and I'm gonna have where'd it go? I'm gonna have some mushroom coffee. Um, but uh, I tried out the Hydro Boost, the Hydro Boost mascara this morning. And I have to say, just putting it on the first time out of the tube, it does a really nice job. It doesn't have as strong a lash lifting ability as Maybelline Colossal, but it's pretty good and it doesn't clump up. I was thinking it might be, I was thinking it might be really clumpy, but that didn't happen here, you can see. Yeah, it went on really nicely and it didn't clump up whatsoever. I'm wearing the Banana Boat Simply Protect Sport. I'm really liking that a lot. It is a little on the green, shiny side and it does pill a tiny, tiny bit, but I like it. The uh, pollution has been kind of high as well as the uh, pollen on water boil why is it taking so long for my water to boil oh i um started using my um giada de laurentis measuring spoons from my fab fit fun box and i have to say i'm a little disappointed with the quality of them i don't know what do you guys think here i'll show you up close No, I I think they're a little cheapy quality. They the rose gold is just a little too pinky. I don't know. It looks they just feel they just feel cheap. That's that's all I can say. They feel like poor quality. You know, if I purchased these, I would take them back. Um, but that's just me. Um, side note, though, I'll show you guys while I'm waiting for my water to boil because that's taking oh. It's tempting me. It's doing that little Anyways, um, I'll show you guys. So I've been doing the Love Sweat Fitness um, videos on YouTube, you guys recommend it, and I got these bands, uh, resistance bands at Target. They are the C, the Champion brand. She, um, she recommends using these in a lot of, she's got a lot of videos centered around these. She even has some that she's come out with that have like her, her brand logo on them that you can get. But um, I figured I would just get these and they're not too bad. I've been using them for about a week and I really feel a difference using them in my inner thighs and my outer hips. And you saw this morning, I think, um, I've been doing some ab exercises as well. So I'm liking that here. I saved the box for you guys. Um, yeah, so far so good. Champion is really good. All right, let's stop joking around here. Um, this is a sunscreen that I'm trying out for the first time. It's kind of like first impressions. Do you guys like this? You know, where I try stuff out in the vlogs. I think it's appropriate to do it in the vlogs versus like a dedicated video. I find those less helpful. Um, but at least that way you can see things live in action without a whole lot of me talking at you about them. But, <laughs> so I'm going to talk at you about this thing I've never tried before. I <laughs> just contradict myself. This is a Cozy Sports Beauty UV Wear Gel X Sunscreen SPF 50 PA++++. I got this on, you can get this on Yes Style. It is a water resistant sport Japanese sunscreen that has, um, Tinisorb in it as well as Uvenol. So the Tinisorb covers UVB, UVA1, and UVA2, and then Uvenol also covers UVA. And then it has, um, I think it has, it's got zinc in it, and I believe it has octinoxate. I'm not entirely sure, but it also has Parcel XLX, which is a filter for UVB. So that's what's giving you really good broad spectrum coverage in this. Um, you know, the funny thing about this, uh, about the ingredient Parcel XLX, Parcel SLX, which is a uh, UVB filter that is approved in the EU and, um, in, you know, many Asian countries for use in sunscreens. This is the funny thing about the U.S., you know, the FDA's weirdness about sunscreen ingredients. Parcel SLX is not allowed to be included in our sunscreens here as a UVB filter. So 
they take parcel SLX away from sunscreen manufacturers as an option to include in the formulation of their sunscreens. Um, you know, they, they tie their hands even further. They really give them a very limited number of compounds to make chemical sunscreens with. But you might say, well, like, why, like, is it dangerous? Is it bad? Is that why? Obviously not. It's been used in Asia and Europe for years, you know, with no problem. And it's a good, a good filter, along with all the other ones that are used in those countries and are not allowed in, to be included in our sunscreen. But it's definitely not a safety thing because Parcel SLX, while it's not allowed to be included in, um, in sunscreens, uh, in sunscreens, it's an ingredient that is allowed in everything else. It's in our shampoos. It's in a lot of personal care products because the UVB filter, you know, is added to protect products, the ingredients in products from UV degradation, albeit at a lower concentration than what you would find in a sunscreen for actually protecting your skin. But it's not as though the FDA gives to flibbity gibbets about protecting us from parcel SLX like that clearly is not their phobia, you know. It's just weird and annoying. There are so many other things that the FDA is completely cool with, which you could call into question, albeit they are, you know, more than safe. The sunscreen filter issue, you know, continues to just die me. Okay, um, this is going on identically to just about any other <laughs> Japanese sunscreen out there, um, kind of like Hadalabo or the... Um, or the Alley UV, not Alley UV Extra, the um, the Ice and Mommy, Kiss Me Mommy. I love that one. Um, this one is fragrance free. It has some kind of fruit extract in, in it though, Ariciola. So there's that, but uh, it is water resistant. I'm just, you know, kind of doing a, a swipey here. I love to carry these around with me for just sort of touching up my sunscreen throughout the day. Now because this is a chemical sunscreen it should technically be applied indoors and allowed to sit up 20 minutes before going outside so um, the UVA that's coming in through my side window here um, I'm not I'm not protected from this so in order I need to give it some time in other words but I've got plenty of layers on underneath. I'm not super worried about it. But it's super sunny. Super, super. Why do I keep saying super <laughs> sunny out today? Um, so I'm over here in the club. And you can see a little post-application wear here. I'm not getting any, um, any redness on my cheeks. But I do feel... I do feel a little bit of stinging, um, but I don't know if that's residual from me having worn over the past few weeks that La Roche-Posay chemical sunscreen that kind of stings. I, th I think it could be that. Um, so, yeah. Oh, these are nice. OXO. I love OXO. Check these out. Three piece, only $20. Three pieces. And oh, these are great. I'm kind of tempted to get those, um, but I don't need them. <laughs> They're really good though for storing like legumes. I use the mason jars, and that's handy. Look at this tiger rice cooker warmer. You can make you can make rice in the kosari. It comes out pretty pretty good. Um, and my mom has the Instant Pot, and rice comes out equally good in that. So, Costco got in these, um, Sweet Earth Tostada salads. More than a salad, it's a fiesta! <laughs> that is promising quite a bit. Uh, but, it, everything's like separate in little bags in there. I don't know, it doesn't look, it doesn't look like the produce in there is too compelling, but it comes with chipotle seitan, um, seitan, seitan. So I suppose you could pick and choose what you put in there and make this vegan. The ranch is not vegan and obviously the cheese is not, um, but you wouldn't have to serve it with that. And they're in little separate packets. I was underwhelmed with my last Costco papaya. Um, 
All right, my sink full of frozen rice cauliflower. I had a coupon um, for Green Giant, uh, save like a dollar off of two, and these were on sale at Kroger, and I think they were also on Ibotta, I wanna say. So I got two of these little bags. They're normally overpriced. And then I, of course, at Costco got the four one pound bags of uh, frozen rice cauliflower, so. Let me pop those in the freezer, but I'm stocked on frozen rice cauliflower for the week. Yeah, I've really been enjoying um, the frozen rice cauliflower. Um, I like to put um, a little bit of non-dairy milk in it and some vanilla vegan protein powder, and it tastes just like rice pudding when you eat it that way. Um, all right, the rest of my grocery haul is basically all produce this week because I have a lot of baseline staples stocked up of course it goes without saying i got my bag of fresh and quick and my lighting is positioned kind of funny he looks sort of he looks sort of in the shadow back there uh they've been carrying the celery at um costco tg so i got more of that because i buzz through this like like a rabbit i go through celery really quickly yeah, I really love the taste of celery. It's very, very refreshing, I like chewing water. <laughs> I also got uh, another jicama. Okay, you guys were telling me how you like to eat this with tahin, tahin. Uh, but uh, you've got to try it this way. I sliced it up into sticks, peeled, sliced up into sticks, and put it in the air fryer for about 10 minutes at 350 degrees. Oh my goodness, it comes out exactly, well, okay, I need to, I need to dial, I need to dial back the enthusiasm. It comes back looking very similar to and tasting pretty, albeit not quite close to french fries. The um, outside gets crispy and brown, that kind of crispy brown bubbly look that french fries have and it's the same consistency as french fries. The difference is that this does not exude grease when you bite into it. So if you enjoy that component of french fries, that will disappoint you. And um, it's not quite quite you know the potato in it, potatoey softness. It's a little more crunchy. But this I believe hikami is um is keto ketogenic friendly, right? Maybe I, I could be wrong. Uh it's high in um I think it's high in inulin or something like that. I could be totally wrong. Speaking of keto friendly, I don't follow a ketogenic diet whatsoever. I know some of you do. You've commented that in the comments. That's why I'm pointing this out. But uh, you know I love chayote squash. And this, I learned, is, is, I mean, is, is uh, friendly to that diet. So for those of you who are into that, you might enjoy these. They taste... Um, not quite like squash. If you don't care for like yellow squash, you might you might still like this. It's more like a almost like a apple, but not sweet kind of in the consistency. It's good. I I I eat these pretty regularly, and I've seen recipes online where people spiralize their chayote squash. I should try that. I haven't used my spiralizer in a long time. They spiralize them into noodles. Speaking of spiralizer, I love to get cucumber this time of year. Last year I was really disappointed in the quality of the cucumber, which just was not shining through, but I decided to get four of them and see how they are thus far. They looked, they looked promising. I got two white onions. I ended up really enjoying this, these broccoli pearls that I got at Kroger. I put these in my crock pot with, it, with lentils. Ah, uh, very good. I got two lemons. I want to start having um, maybe lemon and the rose in the morning. I think that would be a nice taste combination. I also got two garlic bulbs, some cabbage, and then these were on Ibotta. I really racked up on Ibotta this week. They are the I'm pink. They looked really cute. <laughs> I was compelled to purchase them largely because of this image of this uh, swimmer in the orange here. They looked good. So I got these. They're on Ibotta and they were on sale. I bought these uh, in um, uh, squeezed the juice, maybe with a little lemon and the pure rose into ice water. I thought that would be really good for a citrus chiller. 
I had a coupon for the Silk Unsweetened Vanilla Almond Milk, and it also was on Ibotta. So I got that, and then, like I said last week, I really love these no salt added French style canned green beans. As as lame as canned produce is, it 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 has a role. <laughs> I enjoy it. And these these are almost like noodles. They're really they're kind of a convenience food. You just pop the top, drain them, and they're very good with a little bit of vinegar or, as I said last week, uh, stewed tomatoes. Okay, here's another Ibotta score. The uh, Wandering Bear Cold Brew. I tried this last week and I really liked the um, cook the chocolate flavor, so I decided to try the vanilla. This is on Ibotta and I had a coupon from Kroger, so even though it is incredibly expensive, with the Ibotta rebate and my coupon from Kroger, it ended up being like 50 cents. So I will definitely go for that in order to try the vanilla <laughs> flavor. But I'll remind you if you missed this from last week. It is just cold brew coffee and uh, it only has 20 calories and no sugar, no carbohydrate, no protein. I mean, it really has no no value to you whatsoever other than the caffeine and then 20 calories, but it's got coconut cream in it. So it's um, kind of iced and creamy and the chocolate flavor was nice and subtle. And this is a, it's a good strength as far as the caffeine level. It's, it's bold, I liked it, so. Yeah, speaking of bold and lovely, uh, I got my replenishment of Cafe Bustello. And I've been enjoying these little Folgers decaf sticks um, in the afternoon when I want more coffee, but I'm not cut off. These are okay. <laughs> so I got some of those. And yeah, that's everything I got. I didn't get too much this week because I have a lot of staples. I get thirsty talking to you guys. But anyways, that sunscreen held up really well. It didn't burn or sting throughout the rest of the day. Let me position you a little better here. And um, it didn't make my face red or anything like that. It didn't feel greasy or heavy. It is a very small little container. Um, and what else was I gonna tell you guys? It's a small little container. One thing about those sunscreens that always drives home the point to me that I have in my mind, people really fixate on this teaspoon amount to apply. Yes, it's important to apply, to apply a, a sufficient amount, but I think people focus on the teaspoon amount and they get caught up that that is, that once they fulfill a teaspoon amount, they get a gold star. But what I've come to learn in trying out all these hundreds of sunscreens for you guys over the past, you know, since starting my YouTube channel, is that every sunscreen is very different in how well it spreads. And what is important is that you achieve two milligrams per centimeter, centimeter square of surface area on your skin but different sunscreens vary in how well they spread and go on. So you can put on, you know, a quarter of a teaspoon of what of that Japanese sunscreen is gonna spread on a much greater surface area. You're gonna need less to achieve two milligrams per centimeter square than you would a thicker cream that is sticky. Um, it's just harder to get that thin layer with thicker creams. So the amount, if you become hyper-focused on that as, as a, as a end-all be-all, I think you're gonna overshoot and undershoot um, based on my experience in trying all of these different sunscreens. Years ago, that is exactly what I would have told, you know, was telling people to shoot for these teaspoon amounts to different surface body areas, but I mean, it really varies a lot. I mean, that, that little sunscreen, it, the spread on those gel, gel vehicles is much greater than, than the thicker creams. Um, so yeah, but Hydro Boost mascara held up really well. I am impressed with that. Um, I, I really like it. I'm glad I gave that a try. I'm always, always uh, loyal to the Maybelline Colossal, but this may be an option. Anyways, guys, I'm going to conclude the vlog here. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.